say this? 13 or 14? 14. Welcome to episode <laughs> freaking 14. Hello. Hi. Yay, 14. So excited. <laughs> Um, so just to get started, Catherine. Yeah. How you doing? Well, <laughs> feel like uh, feel like a lot has happened in the past twenty four hours. It's felt like a whole year wrapped up in like a day. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel kind of like uh, you know, at the fairs where there's the ride that you like lean up against the wall. It's kind of like a, a circle and you lean up against the wall standing oh. and then it spins. Yeah. Yeah. I hate, well, I actually have never been on one because I hate stuff like that. Yeah. I've only done it once. It sounds terrible. It was weird. It was real weird. <laughs> um, and so you go on that ride and it like spins you and you're like gravitational force. I guess I'm hanging in here. Oh this sounds great. A little terrified. Um, and then you get off and you're like, I can't walk straight for a second. I'm trying to, like, figure out where I am, who I am. Am I a person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Am I on planet Earth? Where am I? Yeah. What's happening? What day is it? Right. Um, that's where I am. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, trying to, like, walk straight, and you're, like, woo! <laughs> because there's just been, like, a lot of things within the last 24 hours that have been kind of jarring and have made me feel off kilter, like, for listeners, I had my first appointment with my psychiatrist yesterday. Um, and oh my gosh, I didn't even ask because of the other thing. How, how yeah. did it go? <laughs> so it actually went really well. Right. Um, I don't know why I said right, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my psychiatrist, she was super sweet. Uh, it was funny. During the appointment, she kept saying like, I'm so glad you came in. Wow, you really needed to come in. I'm so glad you came in. <laughs> I was like, all right, should I have done this years ago? Like, you're acting like I'm, like, really bad. And you're like, thank God you're here. Oh like, this is so good. It's going to be so good for you. I'm like, okay. Maybe she was just trying to, like, make you feel, like, more calm about it or something. She probably was. Yeah. And then probably my brain was like, girl, she's telling you you should have done this years yeah, ago. Yeah, I get that. Well, good. I'm glad that went well. Now yes. You can continue. <laughs> so, yeah, I had that appointment, um, and, and that was kind of draining in, in and of itself. And then later on that day, my dog Donna got attacked by another dog. And we had to take her to the vet, and she was in the vet for five hours, and it was kind of a very um, stressful, overwhelming experience that I was not ready for. Um, luckily, she's fine. Donna's okay. Um, she's at my mom's house chilling now. Ready to eat another rotisserie chicken any day now. You know, what's funny is it cost more to take care of her when she ate a whole rotisserie chicken at the vet than it did for a wound from another animal. So oh my god. Donna's Donna's pain that she inflicts on herself is more costly than <laughs> someone else inflicting the pain on her. Donna. I know, I know. So yeah, and then this morning I started uh, my first dose of Lexapro and I'm kind of adjusting to that right. and dealing with how my body is feeling now taking medication and it's been a little funky and a little weird. So that's why I'm like great. <laughs> trying All to wobbly. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds fun. What a life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ten out of ten would recommend. <laughs> Super fun. Instead of jam packing or instead of like, you know, separating those things mm -hmm. out within a week, you were like, I'm just gonna jam pack this shit into twenty four hours. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I had maybe wanted to do like a chill Friday. <laughs> Nope. jokes <laughs> let's just let's adventure let's just yeah. have a wild ride donna was like chill friday <laughs> not today <laughs> mom even though it wasn't donna's fault but exactly yeah I still feel like donna still was like conniving in some way i feel like yes <laughs> poor thing though yeah. not her fault i'm yes. so sad for her yes she's okay it I'm all glad turns she's out okay right. when, yeah. she, when i saw that picture i was like <gasps> yeah. like i when you so when you told me about it i imagined it being really bad like that but, like, I don't know, when I still saw that picture, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, our Donna girl. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know Donna, she was, like, she's a sassy queen, but she is, like, the sweetest sassy queen she you is. could ever meet. Um, and she's very friendly. And so, like, seeing her with a wound and, like, it, yeah, it did not look good. It's not as bad as it looks, but it does not look good. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so hopefully I got out all of the craziness and wildness in like 24 hours. So yeah. now maybe this whole like next week will be super it. chill. Yeah, yeah. manifesting. Putting next that out there. It's going to be great for all of us, especially Catherine. <laughs> and Donna. Yeah. Catherine and Donna. Especially Donna. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine, we're not worried about you. Yeah, I mean... Especially but... Donna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Courtney, dear. Yes, hello. Hi, I'm hey. here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, how have you been this week? How are you feeling? Um, I've been very, like, up and down all week long. Mm. So, like... <sighs> that was a sigh. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was, like, a whole feeling in and of itself right there. Well, it's because I've been, like, very hard on myself all week, and Mm -hmm. it's been really frustrating because, like, one day I'll be like, Courtney, you're so annoying. Like, I'm so annoying. I'm so big. Big as in, like, tall. Mm. Like, I just, I don't know why my body feels, like, extra long this week. So Mm. I'm like, I'm so annoying. (laughs) I'm so tall. Like, I'm so, like, I'm not fun. Nobody likes being around me. I'm ugly. Like, all this stuff. And then... Like, the next day, I'm like, no, Courtney, you're great. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that bad. It's whatever. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, it's like, Courtney, you are, like, I am a talentless, like, just every bad thing. Oh like, my God. and it's, it's fun, like, and, like, the next day, I'll be like, no, I'm fine. I'm great. Like, it's, and it's just so frustrating because it's like, like, pick one. I don't know, man. Yeah, like, like the back and forth is a lot to it's handle. It's just exhausting. And so it's like, okay, I don't know. But so I've just been very much, like. God, I'm so, I'm so this, I'm so this, mm-hmm. and the next day I'm like, nah, I'm very much this, mm-hmm. like, I'm cool. And that's kind of hard sometimes, because you're like, what am I going to wake up to today? Like, right? what's, what's like today going to be like? Like, just, like, freaking pick one, man. Like, yeah. which, which, like, whatever you want to do, cool, I guess, but, like, like, just pick one. Yeah, I, I mean, know. preferably, like, the, the one where you're like, I'm I mean, great, I'm all right, like, it's all good. Preferably, but how often does that happen? <laughs> Not very often. We're working on increasing it. Yeah, but so, and I mean, I guess that kind of goes into, like, what this episode is about Mm -hmm. also, too, but Mm -hmm. I also will say that I did cry four times this week, um, which was great because of my medicine. I actually haven't cried in, like, months, Mm -hmm. and so I cried, and, like, the other day when I I started crying at one point, and it just felt really good, Yeah, and so I just, like, kept crying, and Nate Mm -hmm. was like, I would, like, Nate and I were messing around, and he was like, I was just kidding, and I was like, no, this just feels good it does it's funny because i was actually telling my friend uh, a few weeks ago that there is like biological benefits to crying like it releases i think it was oxy oxytocin it releases something that makes you feel better so like your body actually like feels better when you're releasing tears Mm -hmm. and it like does that physically and then it also feels like very cathartic to like let out tears and stuff yeah it just felt good and yeah. so I just kept crying. And after that, that big cry where it felt good, I haven't cried since. Mm-hmm. But it's because I got out what I needed to, I mm-hmm. guess. But I know, so that was nice because I kind of thought that, like, like, I feel great on my medicine. Like, I feel excellent. But I kind of felt like, oh, maybe I'm just not going to ever cry again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I'm just, like, not like a robot like, I still have, like, too many emotions. But, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, mm-hmm. a, um, just, like, like, I couldn't cry anymore. Yeah, like, you had kind of like in the range of emotions had gone from like really high and really low to like where you would have tears to now like more middle range and so like tears were just not really a thing right anymore. yeah and like that's that's fine I mean mm-hmm. crying's not always fun and so yeah yeah like crying is good but also there is a point when like crying when it's you can too be much. too often yeah too much and yeah it was definitely too much before and so also like what even is crying what a weird <laughs> thing to think about just like letting out liquid from our face it's just so <laughs> weird um but anyways i next time next time i come over here and i've cried at something i'm gonna go courtney i let out liquid from my face today <laughs> what the fuck even is this like i just like and it's just so interesting and i mean i this is how my brain works too and mm-hmm. people are probably gonna be like oh my god courtney's so high but i'm really not but it's just like like, why do we cry when we're, like, what is it, like, and I mean, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know, but, like, there's probably Yeah, something like, there's probably that, like, total release. reasoning. Yeah, and it's just, like, weird. Also, Anyways. why is it salty? That's, see, that's so good. And, like, just, like, why do we cry when we're sad? Like, why not, like, something else? Mm-hmm. All of these are really good questions. Maybe one day we'll get to the point where we can have a scientist on here. Like, perfect. Maybe, maybe we just need to find a doctor that can, like, 
explain it to us. Yeah, like a doctor, a doctor of mental health and crying. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's any of you guys. We're going to go Google search doctor of mental health and crying. <laughs> we'll get right on that. <laughs> I don't even. Anyway, so let's jump it. into this episode. <laughs> Um, so today we are going to talk about pretty much what, how I just said. I feel mm-hmm. like we usually base our episodes of like what's going on in yeah. our life. So that's what we did for you last week, which mm-hmm. was super awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and this week is just like, let's fucking talk about this. So we're going to talk about like, um, like noticing how we talk to ourselves mm-hmm. and how to train your brain mm-hmm. to do something different and yeah. something better. Yeah. Because I think when you were just talking to, when you're talking about kind of the highs and lows of your week and how you go from one day being okay to one day not being okay, something I noticed was it was the language you're talking to yourself of like, I'm worthless, like I'm not doing things, like I, I no one, like I'm not funny, no one wants to like be my friend. I don't remember the exact words, but. You say Catherine just said I was worthless and I never said, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just, I literally, that's like what I my brain was thinking. Use that word. That's I'm more so kidding. like my own things coming out. Sorry. I'm also, totally you're not kidding. worthless. No. I'm just kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, it like there's a stark difference in the language. Like it is almost like you're talking to yourself when you're experiencing those things. Right. And so something that I've noticed that I mean I do specifically is that when I talk to myself negatively. I always say, like, I'm so annoying, I am so this, Mm -hmm. I'm so ugly, I'm so tall, it's weird, like, I'm so awkward, I'm not talented, I'm worthless, (laughs) I'm not a good wife, I'm not a good friend, I'm not a good sister, like, any, Mm -hmm. like, all of that stuff, it's always I, 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 and then when I try to tell myself good things, I'm like, okay, you are very smart, like, you're very intelligent, Mm -hmm. you're a great friend, and when you, when you say stuff, like, when you're like talking to yourself and you say stuff like you are great or like you are Mm -hmm. it almost feels like you're talking to somebody else Mm -hmm. and so for a long time I struggled with that because I'd be like okay like even in my head like not even saying it loud or like writing it down I'd be like Courtney you are great you are smart like you are fun Mm -hmm. whatever it may be and it didn't just it never like felt believable or Mm -hmm. real yeah like it didn't feel like you could like actually internalize that like actually like accept that yeah Mm -hmm. and I I think I had that like realization like in therapy at one point and I don't remember like the exact day or like session or like what Mm -hmm. we've been talking about but I I do remember like it being like a therapy realization where I was just like oh why am I talking to myself like this Mm -hmm. like and one thing too that I usually think is like well I would never talk to someone else like this like Mm -hmm. I would never be like Catherine you're worthless like you're so (laughs) annoying you're such a bad friend like I would never do that and so like I just I just really hate how easy it is to be so hard on ourselves Mm -hmm. when like we should be like just as kind and Mm -hmm. compassionate Mm -hmm. to ourselves than we are like like we are to other people Mm -hmm. because we're so willing to invest and be compassionate to others and it's so much harder to do that for ourselves Mm -hmm. and one thing that I I have noticed with, like, my own language and with a lot of, like, internal language that people have is it's, like, streams. Mm-hmm. It's, it's never, like, oh, you didn't do as well as you could. It's, like, I fucking sucked at that. Or, yeah. like, that was awesome. That was amazing. I feel super great. And we got to, like, bring it to the middle there. <laughs> yeah. And, like, also, too, there's never just, like, a, oh, okay, well, that was kind of bad. Like, I kind of did a bad job mm-hmm. at this. Like, I kind of did this assignment okay or whatever it may be. But it's always, like, wow, I fucking did not do that well at all. I'm the worst employee mm-hmm. ever. I'm the worst this. And it's mm-hmm. just, like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, be nice to your – like, be nice. Yeah. We have to, like <laughs> – <laughs> we have to become, like, our own best friend. Yeah. We have to – give ourselves the same compassion that we give to our best friend. We have to prioritize ourselves like we prioritize our best friends. Because I, mm-hmm. I, I know for both of us, like, friendship is really important. Like, putting that person first is really important. Mm-hmm. And so we need to be our own best friend. Right? And also, too, like, it's the same thing with, like, how you see your friends or anyone else in your life versus, mm-hmm. like, how you see yourself. 
And it's like, for someone like who, like my sister, like Heather is taller than me and I never look at her and I'm never like, oh God, she's so tall and mm-hmm. awkward and lanky. But when I look at myself, who's shorter than Heather, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so awkward and long. Why are my arms the same size as like a light stand? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I say light stand because... Anyways, yes, I'm in the room. Uh, they're right here. <laughs> but, like, you know what I mean? Like, I never, ever, like, look at Heather and be like, oh, my God, she's so tall. It's so weird. But, like, mm-hmm. when I look at myself, I'm like, oh, God, mm-hmm. why are you so tall? It's weird. And so right? it's just, and it's not all the time. Sometimes I love my height. But this week it's been a little weird. But Yeah. And it's funny because something that we, like, we focus, we hyper focus on is something that others might not ever really think about. Yeah. Like, with you occasionally I'm like oh yeah Courtney's tall like I might see us walking next to each other I'm like I had to look up a little bit yeah sometimes on this camera right here right now I'm a little slouched so it's fine but on that first episode I was like damn I'm so much taller than Catherine but like to be honest I don't think about it that much and I've never looked at your like height and like the length of your arms and legs and like oh she looks really lanky or weird like I've always thought that you're very proportionate and so it's interesting that, like, that's something that you're, like, insecure about and that you think about because it's yeah. something that... Well, and a lot of people, too, when I, like, I don't know, when I tell them that, they're always like, oh, my gosh, but your height is so cool. Like, you could be a model. And I'm like, no, I walk. I can barely walk normal. Like, I'm so <laughs> awkward and, like, all the stuff. And everyone's always like, oh, my God, no. And I'm like, <laughs> But it's just so interesting because, like I said, I would never look at someone else who was mm-hmm. taller than me and be like, ew. God, gross, Mm -hmm. you're so tall. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm not even, I mean, I'm tall for a girl, but I'm only six foot, so, Mm -hmm. like, (laughs) only. But, like, I don't know, like I said, like, even the other day in the store, I saw this girl who was taller than me, and I was like, that girl's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, look at her, she's gorgeous. She's, like, walking around, being all cute and tall. Like, she was standing up straight, and that's another thing, too, is that my posture is really bad. Mm -hmm. So I was like, she's standing up straight, like, she's just really embracing her tallness. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, why can't I do that? (laughs) So, (laughs) well, and I think with that, we have to begin to challenge these like thoughts and feelings. And it's like, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. So there's that thought of like, I'm so tall. I'm so lanky. I'm not proportionate, whatever the thoughts might be. And then it's like, how, how based in reality is this? Like, am I... Is this something that I've just, like, always felt? Have people ever told me this? Like, right. where where is that coming from? And then I think we have to just practice, like, adjusting it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think it's hard, too, because, like, when you just said, like, is this something that people have told you? And, like, people have told me, mm-hmm. like, that I'm tall and awkward and mm-hmm. not, like, weird, but, like, that my body's awkward and, like, mm-hmm. especially, like, I'm really clumsy too and so people are always like oh my god Courtney you're so clumsy like how like and I Mm -hmm. I used to play volleyball and people would be like how are you good at volleyball you can't even walk and I'd be like I don't know because like I just feel like I just and that's another thing too right I just feel like like when you go to do a sport or when you go and do Mm -hmm. something like your body just like takes a different form almost Mm -hmm. and so I just feel like that's what my body always did Mm -hmm. but people would literally like I don't know like kids are mean and in high school I, I was six feet at 15 six, 15 or 16 wow. and so like I mean it's better not better but like my sister reached six foot two and she was 15 so <laughs> we both tell very forever. early and so like kids are mean and like mm-hmm. like especially when you're taller than all the boys too like they're mean and so I guess that's that's one of the things where like that insecurity I guess comes from but it's also super weird because Nate's taller than me now. Mm-hmm. Not now. Like, he's always been taller than me, but, like, he's, like... <laughs> he grew a whole 10 inches in right? the last like, month. <laughs> I mean, I meant that as in, like, I'm with someone who's taller yeah. than me, which, yeah. I, you know, most of the time, previously before Nate, I wasn't. I yeah. only had one boyfriend who was taller than me, mm-hmm. and um, I was taller than the other two, but, like, I don't remember where I was going with that. <laughs> Oh, like, Nate makes me feel, like, really comfortable about my height. Yeah. Especially, too, because it's not, like, like my ex-boyfriend. And it was never negative, but he would always just be like, I love dating a tall girl. And I would just be like, ah, you're pointing out that I'm taller than you. Like, and it just, just like, was like, ah, like, don't point it out. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know why either, but. And it's hard letting go of those things that had started, like, so long ago. Like, when mm-hmm. we were creating our, like, concept of ourselves. Right. And, and then it and just, hearing, like, gets ingrained. Yeah, and, like, hearing, 
I mean, and this isn't just about being tall, but like in, like in high school, like hearing kids like tell you how big and awkward and weird you are, mm-hmm. like out when your brain is still kind of like forming, you're like, mm-hmm. oh God, I am a really big, awkward and weird. Mm-hmm. And then your whole life, you're like, yes, I am. <laughs> you're like, let me solidify that in my brain. Carry that around it's with me everywhere. so much fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'd recommend it for sure. I mean, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I feel like the thing that's been the biggest struggle for me is like really taking those like negative thoughts or like really taking I said that wrong really taking those positive thoughts mm-hmm. and making it more like making it feel more real and being like okay like mm-hmm. instead of saying okay Courtney you are very cool you're very beautiful you're very whatever the fuck ever it might be <laughs> Saying, like, okay, like, I am intelligent, I am Mm -hmm. smart, I am beautiful, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I don't like to... It's a whole other episode, probably. (laughs) I write down affirmations every day, Mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons I do it, is because I'm trying to train my brain into thinking, Mm -hmm. changing those U's to I's. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't... I never say something about how I look. Um, mm-hmm. because, and I think I made a joke about this a few weeks ago and I was like, Haha, it's cause I think all my worth is in my looks. <laughs> I think I remember you saying that. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, huh? And Catherine was like, okay, <laughs> we need to go record an episode right now. And I was like, ha <laughs> You're like, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> and, but I think one of the reasons for that is because, um, I used to be very ditzy, I guess we mm-hmm. can say. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I didn't like test very well in school Mm -hmm. and so um, and I just like I don't know I feel like I got so insecure about like being ditzy that I kind of just like took that you like owned it you're like this is who I am owned it Mm -hmm. even though I was not ditzy Mm -hmm. or like I guess I don't want to say like as ditzy as I like acted because I didn't like act but you know what I mean? Like, I kind of just, just like, like accepted it, it for yourself. You're like, this yeah. is who I am. This is the most I'm going to be. Like, this is my, who I am. I'm right. just going to be it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so a lot of the times people would, like, for years, everyone, like, everybody. And I, I don't think that there's one person in my life as a, until I was about 22. I haven't heard in a long time, which is really great. But there was never one person that didn't say this to me. And it was always like, it's a good thing you're pretty. Uh, like it's a good thing you're pretty okay i'm gonna pause this right there because i hate it so much when people just make comments about your looks oh, or say like, you're lucky you're pretty like the fuck does that mean yeah and like if i if i wasn't good at something people would be like well at least you're so pretty like at least you're this like at least you're tall and skinny and i would just be like <sighs> that like that makes your whole worth just your like outer self Ooh. and does not highlight anything on the inside and that makes me so angry why do you think i have to get ready every day <laughs> i want to punch everyone in the face that ever said that to you and i'm not a violent Everybody. person <laughs> you're gonna be punching a lot of people <laughs> like line up get in line yeah but so i i think that's where it kind of starts when it's like so easy to like and so that's another reason too why i don't i never comment or like make my affirmations or my positive things about my looks because mm-hmm. I want to believe that there is other things to me and like when people mm-hmm. say stuff like you're so pretty and like stuff like that I'm always just like uh, you know mm-hmm. what I mean like I don't I'm never like oh my god thank you I know I am I'm gorgeous like I don't think like that like I don't think we're not gonna get into it but I don't think yeah. I'm that pretty but you know what I mean but like <laughs> we're gonna fight that on another day we'll get there eventually exactly. <laughs> but like so I but I just I never I never want to feel like that's all I am. Yeah, because there's so much more to you. Yeah, and for a mm-hmm. long time, I didn't think that. Mm-hmm. And even, like, my old boss, <laughs> he used to do this thing where we would go interview people, and he would be like, well, do you want to do the interview? And I'd be like, well, I can do the recording. Like, I can do this. And he'd be like, let's let's have you do the interview. Like, you're, you're better to look at anyways. And I would just be like, oh, you don't want me to do the interview because I'm a good interviewer. I'm a good journalist you want me to do the interview because I'm better to look at. And like one time we were um, at the Warrior Games, Mm. which is super cool event, by the way. So we were at the Warrior Games and um, in Colorado and we were at the Air Force Base there. And this Mm -hmm. Air Force Base, it's like a whole, like it's a town. Mm -hmm. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's huge. And so the parking lot to the place where the sports events were held, I'm not even kidding, maybe over a mile. 
And, like, they literally had, like, volunteers that would drive people from the parking lot Mm -hmm. to places, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the first day we walked because it was, like, whatever. But then the second day, like, both of our backs were sore because we had, like, camera gear. Yeah. It's a long walk. So we were, like, well, hopefully someone will come by in a golf cart and drive us. And so this man came by in a golf cart and was, like, hey, do you guys need a ride? And then my boss was like, oh, well, he only picked us up because I had you with me. And I was like, no, this is, like, they're literally taking everybody. So, like, he would just make comments to me like that all the time. And I was just like, uh... It's just, mm, it, he's going to be the first one in line for the ones that I punch. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but so it's just so hard to think anything else of myself when literally forever it's always just been about how I look. Mm-hmm. Well, and it sounds like, that is a really beautiful way that you're trying to combat that or balance that out by acknowledging the internal things that you offer, like Mm -hmm. the things that aren't physically seen Mm -hmm. that you are, that you do, that you really embrace, like being a good friend, being a good sister, being a good wife. I was going to say being a good mom. Don't have a baby yet. a dog mom. (laughs) For a baby mom. (laughs) You're wonderful for a baby mom. Thank you very much. (laughs) But I think that that's great because then it shows your affirmations are what you need them to be. Yeah, exactly. I I think sometimes, too, we get this idea of our affirmations need to be this, like, I am the most amazing human ever. I'm wonderful, stupendous, like, something really big, and then it doesn't feel genuine to ourselves. Yes. And then, like you were saying earlier, it's hard to internalize that, to take that on. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do things that feel like they're right for us. Yeah. And you can even, like... I mean, what, especially what with I did was started small. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, I had a really long or a really hard time for a long time thinking that I was just stupid and that I didn't have any um, knowledge to anything kind mm-hmm. of thing. And so something that I started with, I was like, at first I was like writing, like, I am intelligent. And I was like, that just doesn't feel right. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think I'm intelligent. So I just started out with, like, I am capable of, like, doing my job or, like, mm-hmm. I am capable of taking pictures. Like, it kind of just started out as, like, okay, like, I'm capable yeah. of being smart, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. I'm capable of... Like, you have the ability to yes. do that or be that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I actually went to therapy, did some EMDR around why I think that. Very fun. We can get into that in a different episode. Love <laughs> it so much. Love my brain. But after EMDR and kind of fighting what memory was Mm -hmm. making me think that way then that's when I started writing I'm intelligent like I am Mm -hmm. smart Mm -hmm. I am a badass yeah yeah (laughs) whatever it needs to be yeah and I mean I think too like so for you you focus on the internal things Mm -hmm. someone else might want to include like I am beautiful because that might be something that is difficult for them to accept that they might need to hear for themselves yeah so it really is like starting out baby steps creating Mm -hmm. what you want it to be making it fit you and what your experience is yeah it has to be very personalized because when I first started writing affirmations too I would look on Pinterest Mm -hmm. for affirmations because I was like I literally like can't think of anything Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go look on Pinterest for inspiration and I would read these things and I would just be like this just doesn't feel authentic it Mm -hmm. doesn't feel real to me and so that's when I started just being like okay what do I need to hear right now like and also too I've been trying really hard not to get validation from other people Mm -hmm. because for a really long time like I could only be okay and not feel insecure if I was getting validation from Mm -hmm. other people and I hear that 100% I'm right there with you (laughs) right and let's just like be honest out there Mm -hmm. I used to love getting attention from boys Mm -hmm. and like just because one of the things too that everyone always told me I was pretty so if boys didn't think I was pretty I thought that I was nothing Mm -hmm. and so I realized even like just recently that like I don't need that validation from boys anymore and I mean like I know a big part of that is also too (laughs) because I am married but like it's also because I'm like finally like comfortable with myself because even like when I was younger and I would have boyfriends like I would never like cheat on anyone or anything Mm -hmm. like that like Mm -hmm. it was never like that but like still getting attention like wearing really short shorts for other people Mm -hmm. and like just like stuff like that like it was it was to it wasn't until I got into college actually when I went to Ventura where I started to do things for myself because Mm -hmm. it made me feel good Mm -hmm. um so like dressing the way I wanted to dress because it was comfortable for me and like, yeah. felt good for me yeah. but one of the things that like before that especially that I really needed was like validation from boys thinking I was 
cute Mm -hmm. or pretty because that's all I thought that I had to offer. Yeah. And, like, I don't... I just don't feel that way anymore. (laughs) And that's, like, very much... And, I mean, it's never like I was, like, searching for something like that. But, like, even, like, before... I feel like before this year, I'd always, like, be like, Nate, am I pretty? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, do you think I'm beautiful? And, like, he tells me all the time, like... Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, but I feel like I haven't asked that kind of stuff in a long time because yeah. I don't need You don't need the, that. like, validation regularly. Like, you're able to find and feel good about yourself or you're getting to that point. Yeah, and I really do think a big, huge part of that not only was EMDR, but it's also changing the way that my brain mm-hmm. is working. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, so I... I haven't necessarily gotten to the point where I can do affirmations yet. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time with that. But what I found has worked for me with changing that inner dialogue for how I talk to myself is if I have a situation, and I'm going to be honest here, this is something that I really struggle with. I still have a lot of really negative thoughts. Um, But if I have a situation, like let's say I missed an email and I'm past the 24 hours of when I normally like to respond back to an email, my automatic thought is you are so awful at your job you should have emailed immediately like you're letting this person down Mm -hmm. you suck basically yeah and so what I try and do is I try and like shift it a little bit of yes you probably should have gotten to the email sooner you didn't at this point it is what it is try and respond to it now you're also trying to do the best you can with what you're experiencing right Right, and especially, too, with something like that where, like, it's already happened, it's already Mm -hmm. been that 24-hour period. It's not Mm -hmm. like you can go back and fix it. Like you said, it is what it is. Like, could you have gotten to it sooner? Maybe. But at the same time, like, maybe you couldn't have, and that's fine. Yeah. And it's... I think that I sometimes get... Like, I push back on myself if I try and be, like, too flexible. I'm like, it's totally fine. Like, you have every reason not to get back to it. Mm Because I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I I can't allow myself that yet. Yeah. (laughs) But if I'm at least trying to be a little bit more, like, understanding, accepting, and still acknowledging, like, yeah, I didn't do what I should have done, but I'm working on it, or there are maybe reasons why, it makes it feel a little bit better, and it's not as harsh on myself. Yeah, and and it's not easy to switch that thinking Mm -mm. like it takes so much practice and that's like one of the reasons that I do affirmations like at least five days a week Mm -hmm. because it is so hard and you know if if you're not ready to do like you just said you're not ready to do affirmations yet that's Mm -hmm. fine and still getting your brain to that spot of like your first thought can be like oh my god I suck I'm terrible and then being like wait okay like taking a deep breath Mm -hmm. and being like okay I'm not terrible. Mm-hmm. I did what I could or, you know, mm-hmm. I was super, bu- like, you know, like, just giving yourself some compassion. Yeah. Like, just fucking being compassionate mm-hmm. with yourself is really, like, it's hard, but it's the best thing for changing this pro- this thought process. Yeah. And I think, too, identifying times when you feel the crappiest, when you feel mm-hmm. the shittiest, because then that tells you that something's going on with your thinking and your processing that maybe in those situations like I know at work when I get behind on email or that type of situation I know that I have negative thoughts that I'm talking poorly about myself to myself Mm -hmm. I can identify that and then be more aware when it happens because I think sometimes we aren't always aware of the negative self-talk that Mm -hmm. we're doing so identifying those situations that you can be more aware and then you can kind of pay attention to what you're saying to yourself right I think and I also do think it's easier to like have that awareness of when you're being nice to yourself Mm -hmm. because it doesn't happen very often Mm -hmm. so you're like oh I'm thinking positively positively of myself today wow that's so weird it can it can feel a little uncomfortable yeah and it's and it's yeah exactly like it's it's good it's good (laughs) yeah no but it definitely can feel super uncomfortable and I know a couple episodes ago we did something like that at the end where we both said affirmations and we kind of said it like like our um what do you call something like that like a like an exercise oh like yeah. an activity yeah, challenge we, so yeah we did like at the end of an episode we did if you guys haven't listened to it yet i don't remember what episode it is um but i, I think it might have been episode it was six one of the earlier ones seven yeah maybe maybe don't I quote don't me on that though <laughs> but at the very end of it we did an exercise where we said affirmations in the voice like i am but we were acting like we were talking to each other and so mm-hmm. that was super easy because 
at least for me, I know you struggled I a little struggled bit. Really because, <laughs> because, well, because I thought like, okay, I'm just like, I'm talking to Catherine. So I was like, I'm wonderful. I'm an amazing friend. I'm excellent. Like just mm-hmm. saying all these things. And I feel like it was easy for me because I was like, I'm talking to Catherine. Like mm-hmm. if I was Catherine, this is what I would be saying about myself mm-hmm. right now because I love Catherine. Yeah. And so, but and I don't know if your brain worked like that. No, my brain was like, you might be Courtney, talking to Courtney and you love her and you have all these amazing thoughts about her, but you're still trying to say this about yourself. Yeah, but you're and, like, in the back of my mind, I know what this exercise really is. Yes. Courtney, you're not that sneaky. <laughs> yeah, so my brain was like, sorry, sorry, girl. Like, we can make this challenging. We're going to create a mental block where you can't think about anything nice about yourself in this moment. Yeah. Took me a really long time. If you listen to that episode, it's like, Courtney's like, bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, I am kind. <laughs> and that one took me a while. Like, it, yeah, it's hard. It, and it's, it's, it's really hard. And it takes so much practice. And it's mm-hmm. not something that's just gonna, I feel like we say this in like every episode, that's not something that's gonna happen overnight. But like, it's not. And the like steps to like, I guess, I don't know if it's recovery or just like, living with your mental um illness and your mental Mm -hmm. health and steps to making that better it's steps Mm -hmm. it's the process Mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time (laughs) yeah yeah it's not like a quick fix easy fix Mm -hmm. type of thing and i think it can be cool to i also realize how much i say i think i I start a lot of sentences i think (laughs) and i really wanted to start my next sentence with that as well (laughs) i'm gonna try and hold myself back you got it (laughs) got it ready go (laughs) the pressure's on so oh now i'm so hyper aware of saying i think right what Um, are you gonna say instead you're just gonna start your sentence why do you think you say you think i don't know maybe i'm like trying to preface it with like this is this is my opinion i'm not trying to say like everyone has to think this way or this is like the end all be all way so i'm like prefacing it with like from my perspective. All right, cool. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys. Oh well, I'm gonna roll with it. Okay, I apologize. It. Just deal with it, you guys. <laughs> so I think what's cool is you know you talk about steps, and you can sometimes see the process, like the progress and the process that you've gone through, and you can look back and say, oh, like five months ago, I used to not even be aware that I was feeling this way, mm-hmm. or I was not talking to myself this way. Just like kind of you do now where you're like, I realized the other day that I was dancing and singing and I was okay with being like home alone for a little bit. I was really excited for you. Thanks. Because <laughs> it's a big thing. And then yeah. I think that it can be a process. It can take a while, but you can still feel proud of the steps you're taking because it's a journey and it's something that takes a while, like we said. Mm-hmm. And it... it It's our lives. So it's not like some easy, like, clean cut, like, all right, I'm all done. Like, finish that up. No. (laughs) And, like, I don't even know, honestly, if it's something that you'll ever be, like, (laughs) done. Mm -hmm. I am better. I am wonderful. Mm -hmm. I am great at this. Like, I don't think it'll ever be like that. It'll always be, like, consistent work. And Mm -hmm. you might always have to be aware of what you're doing and aware and like working on it and that's okay Mm -hmm. you also might be able just to I'm done cool I'm awesome I'm talking like this to myself for the rest of my life (laughs) but like which would be really cool and if you can do that teach us your tricks right (laughs) send us a message out that's totally normal right because we want to know how the fuck you do it (laughs) right secret maybe those are the people the right books they're like I figured out the secret so real quick, when you do, I know you said like when you notice yourself doing that, you kind of like take a step back and you're like, okay, and you, you kind of give mm-hmm. yourself time. But like, do, is there anything you do like that day when you notice it's like being worse than other days? Is there anything that you do that day when you're like, wow, I've been really fucking hard on myself today. Holy shit. Mm. Like, And see, this is like one of the bigger things that I struggle with right mm-hmm. now. So honestly, what I end up doing on days when I've been really hard on myself is wine I'm just kidding (laughs) I was gonna say shut down but like wine is like a nice alternative (laughs) there's some days where I'm like I need a cider (laughs) I need a drink but yeah like I I just shut down my brain Mm -hmm. I I watch something I maybe study Japanese if I have the energy and I just try and like 
not engage in anything that requires me to like do something right which is not super great when it's like you get home and then immediately you're like i need to shut down from the world and yet i still have other things i need to do i'm picturing right now when you say shut down i'm picturing um good janet from the good place (laughs) when they like press the button and she just falls on her face like that's what i'm picturing basically but it's me falling into my bed yeah yeah exactly not (laughs) onto the ground (laughs) meanwhile the pups are like in the other room like crying they're like hi mom you're home love us i'm like uh who are you where am i i'm just goodbye I'm like donna go find a rotisserie chicken keep yourself preoccupied <laughs> but don't actually do that but also Please don't no. eat a rotisserie chicken things um we'll save the rotisserie chicken story for another oh my day God, i love it but it's a great one so yeah i tend to just shut down when i've been super hard because i don't have any energy left to be kind to myself yeah so and sometimes that's the reality and that sucks mm-hmm. maybe with medication i'll have the energy to like i will say that medication has made it easier for me so and one thing that i told my therapist too like about medication is i was like you know because I, I am thinking a lot clearer and it's easier for me to do stuff like this mm-hmm. because my brain isn't so like it kind of feels like you know when it's like just like you're driving through the mountains at like 4 30 in the morning <laughs> I only know this. It's a super common experience. Well, because I, I used to play Friday. club volleyball and we would have to drive. Like, I used to live really far away from my mm-hmm. retirement. So we'd have to leave my house at like 4 a.m. Because we used to live three hours away from places and we had to be there by 6.30 or 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. So we would leave at like 4. By the time we were like going through like the mountains, I guess, in the part of California mm-hmm. I lived in, we had to like go up. You mm-hmm. might know the spot because you lived yeah, yeah. in Vegas. Yeah, the yeah. Cajon Pass, you know what that is? Never mind. Mm, For those nope. of you who do know the Cajon Pass, driving it's like driving through the Cajon Pass at 4 in the morning, and it's super foggy, and you can't see anything, and then finally getting out of the Cajon Pass, and it's, like, bright and clear, and you can see everything. That's what my brain feels like <laughs> right now. Like, I can finally, like, see things clearly. Mm-hmm. I can see the roads. I can mm-hmm. see cars that are two feet in front of me. Like, mm-hmm. I can see the lines. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, medicine has definitely helped this process of me mm-hmm. being able to be kinder to myself Mm -hmm. and my therapist told me that that's totally normal and (laughs) what I didn't even do that one on purpose (laughs) I see what you did there (laughs) but yeah so she said that it is normal and that because one thing that I said too when I was like I did EMDR and something earlier Mm -hmm. um this summer ish and I was like I'm just wondering why I'm thinking about it right now and she was like well sometimes medication clears your brain and allows you to actually process these things and Mm -hmm. so I feel like I'm like it's clear enough to actually Mm -hmm. be nice to myself yeah you don't have to like (laughs) struggle through the fog just to get to the end of it like the fog is gone so you can like get there easier exactly Mm -hmm. all I wanted to do was start playing that song it's like I can see clearly now the rain is gone when you were telling the story about like coming through the like mountain pass (laughs) also I'm so happy you just sang on the (laughs) podcast I haven't sung in a few episodes and I'm glad you just did I don't know what that was I'm so sorry I've been watching too much new girl (laughs) love that show also all day (laughs) (laughs) all day also sorry you guys for um listening to me sing oh my god no it was beautiful what do you mean you can actually sing though Oh, better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if it ever happens again. Right? <laughs> Maybe one in I hope it does. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're about wrapping up mm-hmm. now. So takeaways. Takeaways. The fuck am I like at the end of an email right now? It's like the end of a training. Here are the God. takeaways from today's session. <laughs> I work too much. I hated that. <laughs> I think what we hope that you guys maybe have gotten out of this or like kind of the things that we like really wanted to highlight were being aware of how you talk to yourself being kinder in how you talk to yourself more eyes instead of you mm-hmm. taking time to either write affirmations or to just be conscientious of situations where you do talk negatively to yourself acknowledge it mm-hmm. and then mm. be your best friend that's a good one mm-hmm. be your own best friend episode title mm-hmm. drop Thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys haven't already, yeah, subscribe to our... We forgot. We're on YouTube now for those of you listening on podcast. Mm-hmm. We're on YouTube now, so subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
We will also, in the near future, be posting fun things like vlogs and yeah. stuff. So subscribe to us there. Follow us on Instagram at mm-hmm. That's Totally Normal, right? If you listen to Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. leave us a five star review. Just kidding, any review you want. <laughs> also, but if you want to leave us stars. a little message in it too. <laughs> <laughs> If you want us to leave us a little message, we'd love that. Yeah. Hear your opinion. And yeah, you can listen to us on most platforms. Yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you guys next Thursday. Matane! Bye, friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a, like a, like a... And... But maybe with... Sorry, I didn't... No, no, go right ahead. Um, when you're experiencing those things. Right, and so I... And what something... What... Bleep, bleep. <laughs> So we have to begin to challenge these, like how I talk to myself is 